All right, welcome uh, to a day to learn how we could restart a file. As it turns out, I um, kind of set myself up for this uh, by mistake. Um, I expected to start this uh, video with uh, an item that was already cut. And as it turns out, um, I started the wrong Zoom meeting. So I'm sitting here waiting while it's cutting and looking up, seeing if anybody's joining and nobody is joining. I'm wondering, oh man, what, what did I do? So I looked and I'm like, oh wait, today is not Wednesday, today is Thursday, and we're going to be talking about starting and stopping a file. So I had to stop the, the process of cutting um, to close down my session of Zoom um, and get the new one started. So I did start or stop the file in the middle of uh, cutting this. So we're going to uh, take a look at how I could or how we could get this file restarted um, and finish finish the cutting path out. So a um, few things uh, first, uh, we'll get that first and then uh, we'll look at changing the bit and uh, starting the 3D file. And I'll show what you what we are working on. And this was kind of a continuation of what we were doing on Tuesday. Um, I did scale down um, our file that we were working on uh, last Tuesday to just to be fit within a five and a half by five and a half inch board, or within a five inch uh, five and a half inch diameter, five inch diameter here. So it still worked the same items, uh, the same tool paths that we did on Thursday, only I did change the size of the bits down rather than going with the quarter inch cutter uh, that we went around for the pocketing. I chose to do a eighth inch cutter. Um, and then for the 3D uh, finishing tool path, I brought that down to use a 16th inch cutter and um, saved it out. So what we have uh, in the files that I have saved uh, we'll preview them kind of separately and independently. So I did save out these two tool paths here and let's go ahead and preview what those are gonna look like. Reset the preview with those two being visible, previewing those visible tool paths. So this is what we're gonna have. Um, of course, uh, I didn't take the time. I really should go down one more uh, bit size or bit diameter to get the uh, text visible. Uh, if there's time at the end of the session, I might play around and get a bonus out of that, which no, oh, it was reminded that I, uh, or mentioned that I always say this at the beginning. I don't know if we'll fill a full hour or not with this, uh, but we will see if there's time left over at the end, we will modify and take a look at how to finish this out. So I did save these tool paths out and that was what was in the middle of being cut when I just got logged in here. I did stop it. Um, then I have the 3D finishing toolpath saved out which is the center eagle there and it will preview what that is going to look like. So this is what it should look like when, when we're complete. Um, the eagle really probably should have a smaller bit than that 16th. Yeah, inch bit, but that happens to be the smallest bit uh, that I have. Um, so the first thing that uh, I need to do is figure out what line or where in this file did I stop the cutting. And to know that, and one thing that I never do, and I always forget to do when um, I go to start a file or stop a file and knowing that I'm going to restart it, when you stop a file, in the middle of cutting, it does post up a message box or a message there that asks you if you want to quit, stop, resume, and um, it, it posts a line number. And I always forget to write that down. Um, that, that's it's an important number to, uh, to know because we need to be able to start at that line number again. Well, luckily, I have uh, the file logs turned on. So every file that is cut, a log file is generated to give us a little bit of information about what has happened uh, with the file, uh, just kind of a log of the file. So that log file is saved in the same location that you saved the cutting file or run the cutting file from. So it was this Justice125 pocket is the file that I was running that I had stopped. 
So when it would have been completed or when I stopped it or ended the file, it created this file here with the same name, only with a log labeled after it. This is going to tell us what line number it is ended on um, or did it complete. So I'm just going to open this up in any text editor. Actually, I might already have it opened up here. I do. Just to show, I open that up in just Notepad or any text editor that you have there. Um, it tells us what did we do with this. this. We did have this in move cut mode. The elapsed time that it took to run before I stopped it was three minutes, 30 seconds. Gives us some uh, maximum, minimum uh, distances that it has moved. But this LN is the number that we're looking for. Uh, it is listed here and it is also listed up here. So that is the line number that we stopped the motion on. Now, I haven't moved it from when I stopped it. So I know the next move or if we started it at that file, it's going to go st start right where it is. Um, but before I go to start that, I'm going to look to see what is on that line number and then in depth. So if we open up the pocket uh, file, the shopbot file, it will open up in the shopbot editor. And I'm going to uh, just scroll down to that line number 2773. And I just typed in control G for a go to 2773 and hit okay. It brings us down, <laughs> look at that, it was almost done. I, I, <laughs> I should have just waited. Um, so really nothing more uh, probably needs to be done with this, but if I wanted to restart it right here, just have it finish those last few lines, um, I, I could do that. But what I'm going to do to make sure that uh, it didn't get everything and didn't stop, you know, report number, this is back up a little bit more. And I'm going to actually start it at line number 2672. Now, by, by starting it at this line number, we are going to know it is going to make a straight line move from where it currently is right now. Hopefully everybody's able to see the camera and see what's going on here. Um, so it is going to make a straight line move from the tip of the cutter down to the location of the file. So the file is uh, telling it to cut three inches in the X, three inches in the Y. So we are roughly three inches in the X right now, but three inches in the Y is going to be back here. So what's going to happen if I start this file at line number 2672, the bit is going to start from right here and make a straight line move to the coordinates that is on that line number, which is, you know, three, three, and a minus 315. So it's going to go X, Y, and Z is going to be moving down, and as it gets in here, it will start cutting through the material that I do not want it to cut through. So I need to have it moved over to that location first before starting on that line number. I'm going to just jot down and remember that line number, 2672. And I am going to make note of the X, Y coordinates. Um, or better yet, I'm just going to do a sweep select and do a control C to copy that. Come to do and then control paste, which is pasting those values in there. I'm going to hit enter and then the machine's going to move to those coordinates. <laughs> All right, so it is there. Um, there are a few things that we also need to pay attention to or understand um, in the uh, file is we are kind of basically skipping over everything that is in the beginning header of the file. So it's just kind of skipping past um, commands to turn spindle on and, and all of that. So we, 
it's always safe to set that up uh, first. Um, it's always uh, good to see that first and pausing for a second. I just uh, saw somebody had a question. Uh, should they be seeing more than just the editor screen? Well, right now, only the editor screen and then the uh, camera is uh, is running. So it might be off to the side on your um, uh, side. So you should be able to see the uh, ShopBot desktop uh, in, in the camera view. Um, which might be, you might have a split screen camera on the right, screen sharing on the left, um, or you might have to click a camera button. I'm sorry, don't quite uh, remember exactly how that works. And since I'm the presenter, I see something just a little bit different than you do on your side. All right, so I'm gonna set up uh, a few things first, uh, make sure that uh, I'm, Got move speed set right, uh, which we set them to be at two and 1.3. And then um, tool number two. So if you have a tool changer, it is important to know that you want to start the machine when you're restarting in the middle of the file. Make sure that that tool number and tool call it and the tool, everything is set up in that spindle because it's not going to know to change tools because uh, we're skipping over top of this. Um, yeah, so I think uh, we're ready to go. Um, output number one, clicking that button there, that kind of loads and sets the spindle up for starting. So it is connected to, spindle start is connected to outputs number one and number four. So notice you cannot click on number four and have it uh, turn on like you can number one. If I open up the keypad, number four turns on. So number four automatically turns on anytime the machine is going to move or is ready to move or is moving. So with number one turned on, and then when you go to move or open up the keypad, this gives you the opportunity to say, yes, we are going to start the spindle. So closing the keypad shuts the spindle off because number four went off. But output number one is still on. So the spindle is still kind of, you know, cocked and loaded, right, ready to start. As soon as number four comes on, we're going to get a message to um, start the spindle. So that is uh, good there. The next thing I want to take a look at is the move speeds. We're right there. X and Y move speed is good. We're starting at the location where we want to start and going to file, go to line or single step. So first thing it needs to know is what file are we going to be running in the middle. So we started the justice pocket one, selecting open, then start. But now it's saying um, we're going to start the spindle router. We're going to say okay to that. Um, let's see. So I turn, uh, I'm going to say okay to that. Wait one second, I'm sorry. Uh, let's see what I'm doing here. So I'm going to say okay to this, and the spindle is going to start. Now what I did is I just went over and turned the RPM down so we could uh, continue uh, talking without hearing the noise of the spindle. Now notice uh, the line number there. It says 772. Well, it looked up and saw that we had a log file there and it ran that file to that line number. So if I really wanted to restart it right at that line number, there's nothing more that I would need to do other than say, go. But I don't want to do that. Um, we moved it and we're starting actually on line 2672. And so here we go. Set up and restart of this file. So it gives us some information here on what to do. So let's click go to. You see in the background here, it kind of flip through those line number line numbers and set us up at that file. 
And at this point, I'm just going to select to run from here. I'm not doing it right now because I'm going to turn the RPM of the spindle back up and uh, I'm gonna not speak uh, while we're cutting here. If you have your speakers uh, turned up, uh, it might get noisy. I don't know how the uh, noise filtering kind of works. So uh, we're going to hit uh, run from here after I turn the spindle back on. I knew I was that close to finishing uh, when I ran that file. I, I would have just let it run. Um, but anyway, that is a starting up a file from the uh, middle of uh, middle of cutting. So the next thing that uh, we're going to do is uh, take a look at how or what happens if you've like we've lost power and uh, the computer became disconnected and everything just kind of shut down in the middle of cutting and we've lost the x and y zero so notice that i am not zeroed at the lower left corner of the table where you might have something zeroed uh, and that's where the proximity switch is uh, zero um, would set this so there is a um some numbers um, that i have and i wrote those numbers down so x and y two and a half and 3.7. So those are the values that I relocated x and y over to the lower left. So I'm going to show how I set up and first got that point selected and then um, we'll look at how to reset those values. So actually we'll go a little bit kind of advanced and show you a couple ways of doing that. So uh, first thing we're going to do is go into the C, cuts menu, in three to home, X and Y. All right, so what I did uh, the first time is uh, to set that zero, I just moved using the keypad. Over top of where roughly the corner, just, just by eyeballing that corner there. And then to make uh, my life a little bit easier with writing numbers down, I looked at that and I rounded up. Um, so at this point, I closed the keypad and I said we're closest to 2.5 and 3.7. So I did a M2, move two axes at 2.5 comma 3.7 and then enter. And at this point is when I wrote those values down. So writing those values down now allows me to get back to that exact location. Um, so at this point, I could type in Z2 to zero out X and Y. So that is, um, one way of uh, relocating. I'll uh, show you another way, another method to use. So I'm going to home it again using the C3 command. So X and Y have been re-zeroed back to the table base zero again. Now, since I have those numbers written down, I know that X and Y, X is two and a half inches over is where I went zero, and then Y is back 3.7. Now, if this was zero um, and zero, zero where I want it to be, that means then that the location of where it is sitting right now is going to be in negative space. There is a command that we're able to use. It's called values access location. And we are able to set and specify the location of where the machine is sitting right now. So going into the values menu 
access location. And I am now able to say and tell the software and tell Shopbot 3 that the X value is sitting at minus 0.25 and the Y axis location is a minus 3.7. Just gonna say okay to that. And now look at the red position screen, you see that X is that minus 2.5 and the Y is at that 3.7. So if I move both of those axes to the location of zero, zero, M2, zero comma zero, and then enter. It goes over to the location of where I had reset zero for our, our cutting. So that is uh, how to get back to a known location again. Um, to cut. Uh, I'm going to talk. Uh, let, let's take a pause right there because uh, that is what we have on um, how to start up a file in, in the middle of cutting or if you know something happened in the middle of cutting how can we get back to that location uh, before I go to what I want to talk about next which is a little bit about z-zeroing and just uh, experimenting a little bit with the cutting files that we uh, created while I continue uh, starting, I'm going to change the cutter and put in a 16th inch ball nose. And uh, we're going to zero it to uh, create and just start this uh, file here. Um, so, uh, as we talked about um, last uh, Tuesday, is I, I didn't do a roughing toolpath and we didn't uh, set up a roughing toolpath for this. So, I'm going to see if I'm right. Um, and uh, see if this uh, bit is going to be strong enough to do a 16th inch bit. We're removing almost three eighths of an inch material here um, to see if we can't make that happen without a, uh, a roughing pass. Um, I think we're gonna be okay with it. Um, as I said on uh, Tuesday, but we're just going to see what happens. So changing the bit. Um, that is uh, the bit that we're going to use. It is a fairly small uh, 16th inch ball nose, 8th inch shank. Um, we also have the, um, the ball nose, uh, tapered ball nose, which I don't know if I have any in my drawer. I do not. Um, but the tapered ball nose is actually a little bit stronger bit, and I am 100% certain it would be strong enough to do that. Um, in a single pass. Uh, let's, let's see what happens. So hopefully everybody's day is going well. It is a, another sunshiny day here in North Carolina. Birds aren't singing as much today. I think it's too hot for them. Uh, it is, uh, a little bit of a hot day today. So um, I did snap the collet in there. It is an eighth inch shank. So the Z zeroing that uh, I do, it's even though I have the Z zeroing plate uh, right right here, it's actually very rare that I um, use the plate itself. Um, not sure why, um, I, I don't typically do that. So what I'm gonna do to zero this is opening up the keypad. I'm gonna zero it kind of over top of the eagle here itself. Using the keypad uh, to move it around, just gonna page down. And then there is this button here that's the fixed distance. And there's a couple ways of doing it. Since this is just wood, I would typically just uh, put it in fixed distance and do a page down until I see the tip of that bit right there on the material. And at this point, we we'll just type in ZZ to zero at that location. Another method that I use is the piece of paper. Uh, so I'm going to 
can't slide that in there. So I'm just going to page up and do the same, same thing, only this time having the paper underneath of there, putting it in fixed distance and just wiggling that paper. until that paper does not move and it is right there. And it quite surprising that my eyes uh, worked because uh, uh, for those that know me and see me, you'll, <laughs> I, I got some, some glasses. Um, that is, uh, I need them. So anyway, uncheck that. We're still at zero, uh, do a page up. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to run this file, let it go for a little bit. I'll, I'll stop it so we can see what the uh, file is. We'll let it go for just a little bit to see if that is going to be strong enough to um, not break the bit. So we're going to file part load and running the file for the 16th inch ball nose, selecting open and start. <laughs> All right, so it looks like it was uh, gonna move right along and make it without any issues. Uh, this is uh, the message that I was speaking of when you go to stop a file, that it gives us the current line number that it is stopped on. In this case, you might wanna make note of the 2266. And again, if we did not uh, have that number, it is in the log uh, if we turn it on and uh, take a look at it. Um, at this point, you have the option to resume or quit. I'm gonna select quit and uh, just take a look to see what is in that log. And there is that number 2266. So if power went out, we would have to rehome the machine X, Y, and Z because we don't know if gravity moved uh, the Z down as power went off. You know, if we're moving at a higher rate of speed, if power goes off as it's moving, X and Y could, you know, momentum and inertia could make that move just a little bit farther um, than lose zero. So rehoming the machine with the proximity switches, writing the uh, values down that we, you know, relocating Z based on the values that we wrote down originally and uh, restart the file from that line number. So that is uh, it's about a half an hour. So this time I actually did not go and have enough content to fill up an hour. Um, so uh, we have, or I have lots of time 
to uh, have open discussion. If anybody has anything to say, uh, anything that uh, they would want to learn, that even if it's not about the topic that uh, we're talking about here. Everybody good? I do. Yeah, test run a file before I uh, run it. There's a couple ways of doing that. Um, one is uh, what is called running it in 2D or 3D offset. So uh, let's take a look at that because uh, that's, that's a good point. So running, uh, doing a jog home, which is going to bring X, Y, and Z, or X and Y back to zero, zero. And if we run this file right now, uh, let's run that little pocketing file. I'm going to turn the key off to our uh, spindle so it doesn't start. Going to file, part file load, and running that uh, pocket file that uh, ran at the beginning. Most people, or most of the time, we just completely ignore uh, this fill-in sheet. I'm going to run this now with this option down here set to 3D offset. So basically what it is going to do is temporarily set X, Y, and Z from the current position of where it is, it's going to treat that location as a zero, zero. So since the Z is up a half of an inch, it's going to say that that bit is really zeroed right where it is. So I'm gonna say start, And you can see the Z actually went up um, and we are farther up uh, off of that than that one inch. And we're actually up an inch and a half and just answering the normal questions here. So I'm gonna stop it so I can speak. As, as you can see, hopefully as you can see, that bit is not going down into the material and cutting, even though Z0 is set to the table surface. So that is one way that I run an air cut and it's possible to. Another way that I, I personally typically do it is just re-zero the Z at a different location. So I move the Z to 0.5 and I specify exactly a position to move to so I could zero the Z at that position and then when I'm all done running that file for air cutting or testing, I then use the VA command uh, by moving the Z down to zero and then entering in VA and changing the Z value back to 0.5 and then enter. So I haven't lost zero, uh, but it just allowed me to re-zero that up a little bit higher. I'll uh, just quickly show the restart of the file again. So I did stop that 3D file and I see the 3D file was stopped at 2266. So opening up the file, because I want to get the location since I've moved it around everywhere. Uh, I know it's over here somewhere, uh, but just knowing where that location is, 2266, that's a control G. And it is going to be right here. Close that. Are you mother I don't need to save that file. Doing an M2 and moving to that location. Going FG or file. Go to line single step. That is the 3D file that we're running. Selecting open, then start. I want to go to that location and I've made a mistake. Yes, it is. And the spindle is going to start and there it goes.
All right, so that was uh, just kind of a quickly uh, restart uh, of that. And uh, to answer uh, you know, Billy's question, uh, has a, um, an issue where it's cutting uh, way too deep. Um, not, not sure why. Uh, that, that's a tough one to answer. The um, issue is uh, most likely a Z-zeroing issue. Uh, to where it is not, uh, the Z does not have the zero that you expect it to have. But the biggest, actually the biggest reason that uh, people have for cutting way too deep is uh, the option in the job setup. Are you zero to the material surface or to the machine bed? If you have set the uh, V-carve or the file to be set up to have the Z zero to the material surface, but then when you go to the machine to cut and you zero the machine to the table surface, well, what's gonna happen? It's gonna cut way too deep. It's gonna cut through the material and down into the spoil board. Uh, so that is actually a fairly common mistake that uh, people have uh, when, when cutting. Yeah, have I ever put a pen or a pencil in the machine? Yes, actually I have. Uh, I, for, for some reason, this is a uh, Widget Works um, uh, Potter Pen set, uh, which I don't have. Uh, for some reason, I've got like a lot of tape wrapped around it, um, with some heat shrink uh, around uh, this. But uh, it is a pen uh, that it's two sleeves. It uh, goes into the spindle, and it's kind of weight loaded to be able to. Um, have it kind of floating across the top of the material, similar to what like a uh, the diamond drag knife is, or the uh, it's, it's got a little springy type motion to it. Um, I, I've not done a lot of them, a lot of it, but yes, I have uh, done just that. Uh, the issue with uh, just being able to putting the pen in there is that height variance, uh, and not putting a lot of pressure on the uh, the tip. As you can see, this. Uh, tip actually isn't on that pen anymore or marker. So setting up the uh, proximity switches. That's a good, uh, a good topic. Uh, we'll take a look at that. Setting up proximity switches. They are um, at the extents of travel. So say if I always wanted my X and Y to be zeroed out at that location where we had it uh, or just at a different location. We're going to take a look first at the uh, ShopBot setup. So tools, and then ShopBot setup. Once it opens up, we will click next a couple of times until we get to a section that talks about proximity switches. So we see the, uh, these two values here. Uh, we have a button there that says, make it easy on me, or if you uh, like doing things the hard way, uh, we could do that. So what these uh, two values are, is the distance zero is being set from the trigger of the proximity switch. So that is um, basically the same thing that I did when I used the VA command to reset that location out here. Uh, and that's the reason why they are negative numbers. So that uh, minus nine five and then minus point five. So I'm just going to write those numbers down to demonstrate what is happening with these uh, with these numbers. So I'm going to close. Actually, I could leave now or close it. <laughs> so I'm going to run a C3. So now what, where the machine is sitting, the X uh, number that we had there was a minus 0.95. So I'm just gonna type in to move the X a minus 0.93, just not quite to the 9.5. And I'm looking for input number three, it is not on. And we see we're very close to that 9.5. Now I'm going to move the Z to that minus 0.95, and we probably won't even see it move, 
Um, so m x minus 0.95, and then enter. And that, that little bit of movement there, we can now see that input number three is lit up. So that is saying we now know where it is, and we want zero to be minus nine or farther over. So if we want it to be zeroed out a little bit farther, we could just go in to those uh, ShopBot setup. Tools setup. And change these values here. If we want it to be, uh, like I said, zeroed over here uh, farther, um, let's put in those numbers. Uh, I actually have to do some math and I've lost uh, the paper uh, that the values was on, but let's just say that was two and a half, so it's like 3.5. And uh, the other one was two and a half, so I'm gonna say minus three. When I close the settings, it's asking would I like to save these changes? Yes. Running a C3. So hopefully the camera picked that up. Um, I didn't get my math right and my uh, numbers exactly right, but you can see it's no longer zero to this lower left of the spoil board. It zeroed itself out a little bit farther into the table. And it is all based on those, those numbers uh, in the ShopBot setup. So again, sh tools, ShopBot setup. So the editor software, um, it's not used for a whole lot. Um, unless you're into uh, hand coding uh, and programming such. Uh, like we did uh, a video uh, a few weeks ago um, on how to program the machine to touch off of a Z0 plate to get a height thickness or a height difference. So the, basically the text editor is nothing more than just a notepad uh, to be able to type in code um, back, you know, years ago before, you know, CAD CAM uh, became easy and affordable. Um, we would spend a lot of time in the editor uh, typing out code and uh, kind of plotting and graphing it out. But uh, with the uh, CAM software today, there's not much use for the editor other than, um, you know, just reviewing and seeing what we had. Um, but th that's about it. Um, j just a, a big uh, text editor that uh, adds color uh, to uh, some of the commands. All right. Well, I think uh, we'll finish it up for today. Uh, next week, um, one of the topics is going to be uh, about hold down um, and uh, how we could uh, you know, use vacuum to hold down. If you have a vacuum and you find that the vacuum is not strong enough to hold the parts down, we're gonna look at uh, strategies in uh, setting up a tool path to try to overcome the, um, the vacuum hold down a little bit. And uh, we'll just, uh, in general, uh, talk about uh, hold down. All right, if you guys have any questions between now and then, uh, send me an email. Um, and we'll try to incorporate uh, any questions into the next session and uh, Thank you for joining us. We will uh, see you uh, next, next Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. Have a good day.